Hey there, i um, going to go over this review here real quick and um, see if you have any questions. Uh, so if we're doing transformations, uh, I always look for the number at the back, not in the, ex, uh, not in the absolute value signs, and that will tell me my vertical shift. So this one would be, that negative one stands for uh, shift down one. Uh, this three right here in with the X is a left to right shift. And since it's in the uh, absolute value signs, it's lying to you like it always does. It's shift left three, even though it looks like a right three, but that tells you to shift left three. Okay, similarly here, we're gonna have shift up one. That's from that part. And then we're gonna shift right three from this part, because it's lying to you again. And then what does this negative sign up front do? That flips it upside down. Um, and then similarly on the other ones, kind of the same deal going on. This five would be a shift uh, up five. And now we got a little different thing, a one fourth in front. It doesn't flip it upside down or anything, but it does affect the Y values. It is a vertical compression by one fourth, which means every Y value will be one fourth as high as it used to be. And last but not least, that seven will uh, be a vertical stretch by seven, which means every Y value is seven times higher than it was. And this is left two, because it looks like right two, but it's actually left. All right, so those are our shifts and stuff. Feels like a while ago we did that. Um, now we're getting into adding and subtracting. Uh, adding's pretty easy. You just take 3x plus 1 plus 2 minus x. Don't really have to worry about parentheses. All I have to worry about is combining like terms. Um, so I got uh, 3x minus x is 2x and plus, and we got these. Just make sure you don't miss anything. Okay. Um, now you do have to be more careful in here. One, be careful of the order. And two, you have to put the second thing in parentheses or you're gonna mess it up. So I have two minus X minus, and you gotta put parentheses around this. So that negative sign distributes to both parts. So it's really two minus X minus three X minus one. Um, and then we combine like terms again. Negative four X and plus one. And we have H minus F um, on this one. So we got H is X minus two, and then F is three X plus one. That minus sign goes in there again. So just another chance to be kind of careful with this. And we combine like terms, we get negative two X um, minus three. So cruising along. Now we get to a little tougher one, f times g. So you gotta put them both in parentheses. Here's f of x, which is three x plus one. Here's g of x, two minus x. And now we do our FOIL thing. So you got your first times first is six x. Your outer is minus three x squared. That negative sign goes with it. And then inner is plus two. And last times last is minus x. And then we want to combine like terms. Um, the x squared doesn't have anything to combine with, so we do that. And we have five x's left and two. Boom. Okay, so now we get to division, which is similar to the other ones, except after you write it in a fraction, you have two jobs left. So there's f of x, here's g of x. Uh, and your two jobs are one, see if anything cancels, but it doesn't in this case. Um, and two, state a domain restriction. So this is the answer since it doesn't simplify anymore, but 
you also need to find out when the bottoms equal to zero because you are not allowed to equal zero. So you basically set up an equation to zero except you put the not equal sign and then you solve it like normal, right? And then x must not equal two. There's your domain restriction. So you have to have both of these things to get full credit. You have to get the answer and uh, the domain restriction. Then we get to g of x. Oops, two minus x over x minus two. Um, this something will cancel. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but if you ever have something in the wrong order. What you're allowed to do, and should do, is take out a negative 1. Now if I take out a negative 1, that makes this guy negative and this guy positive. So it would become x and a minus 2. It's basically a little trick in math. If you ever want to switch the order of a subtraction problem, you can take out a negative 1. Okay, and then, then these guys cancel because they're matching. So your answer is actually negative 1. Seems like there's no domain restrictions, but you always have to do that domain restriction in the original problem. Don't do it on the end where stuff is already canceled. Um, do it on the beginning part. X minus 2 is not allowed to equal 0, and then you move the 2 over. X not equal to 0. Oops, sorry. X not equal to 2. X. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Even though the end answer didn't look like it had any restrictions or denominator, it does have a restriction. Because you always look back to the original division problem. Alright, so now coming down the home stretch here. Uh, simplify using these rules. Uh, this is when you plug g of x into f of x. So we're going to go instead of x squared, it's going to be x plus 4 squared. And hopefully you're good. At recognizing this, you go, you know, you got to do your foiling thing. Boom. Got it. Okay. Similarly, if you ask me for g of h of 5, I'm just going to find h of 5 and then take that answer and plug it in here. Okay. So h of 5 is pretty easy. 2 times 5 minus 6, that's 10 minus 6, equals 4. I'm going to take that answer and plug it right in there for g of x. So g of 4 is what I'm really being asked. That's 4 plus 4, also known as 8. Pretty sweet. All right. All right, so here we go on the back, g of f of x. So g of f of x is a little easier. Because I'm going to take it the other way. This goes in for that x. So it's just x squared plus 4. No big deal there. h of g of x. So we look at h of x. And we're going to plug a g of x in there. So this guy is going in there. So it's going to be 2 times x plus 4. So minus 6, minus 6. And then just a little distributing and simplifying after that. Boom. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. That one's done. The only ones that get domain restrictions are the division problems. All right. So now we're going to find the inverse. And remember, inverse, if this guy's a y, inverse, you switch the x and the y and solve it back for y. And then we divide by 3, divide by 3, so y is x plus 5 over 3. And then if it's an inverse, I want to give it that fancy notation. Instead of a y, I want to say f with a negative 1. Beautiful. Okay, it means inverse of f of x. All right, similarly, that's a y. We're going to switch the x and the y. First thing I do is move the 3 over with subtraction. 
And last, how do I undo divided by 7? You multiply by 7. Now make sure that's in parentheses. You can either distribute it and say that times 7, that times 7, or if you feel like it, you could just write it as um, 7 parentheses x minus 3. Um, and then finally, you give it the fancy name of inverse g, and you call it 7x minus 3. Awesome. Okay, three facts about inverse functions from your notes below. Well, you got to check your notes, you know. Um, you should do something with the graph, something with the points and the x and y values, and something with the domain and range. Check out your notes for that one. Okay, so here's kind of interesting. If you have a something written like this, there's your x and there's your y. Your input is 2 and your output is 5. So which of the following statements must be true of the inverse? Well, since it does the old switcheroo, I would be looking for one that has an input of 5 and an output of 2. So I search through here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. And then this says graph the function negative 2x plus 1. So I can do that. Here's plus 1. Down 2, right 1. So we got this going on. Or up to left one. So we got this beautiful graph here. Check. Awesome. Now it says graph the inverse of this guy. So first I gotta find the inverse, right? So I wrote this equation, switch the x and the y's. Now I go through my little process here and divide by negative two x minus 1 over negative 2. Um, and then I'm going to graph that. Now it helps me not only to write it as inverse f of x, but to write it instead of, since I'm going to be graphing this, it helps me more to write uh, x over negative 2 plus 1 over negative, or 1 over 2. Um, because you can divide the x by negative 2 and the negative 1 by negative 2, which if you're wondering why it's positive, that's why, because it's a negative divided by a negative. This is more helpful for me because I think of this as f of x is negative 1 half x plus 1 half. Um, that I can graph. So I go up to a half, put a dot, and then you're going to go uh, down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. So I have to land in the middle of these things, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Or up 1, left 2. Up 1, left 2. Okay, and you get this graph. And, all right, um, so let's see what else here. Yeah, my graph's not perfect. I missed my line here. There it goes. Okay. So now I explained how I graphed it. Um, oh, I could have just switched the X and Y points. I don't know why I didn't do that. Shoot. That could have been for the original. I could have just churned out a few points that way. Um, like the point, you know, 0, 1 would become 1, 0 on the other guy. And that would have been easier. Or am I being crazy? Oh, that's how I should have graphed it. Just switch the x and y points. Would have been a lot nicer. Um, give the domain and range of the of f of x in interval notation. Well, it goes forever to left and right. So there's your forever, and there's your forever. That wasn't too interesting, but. Um, one other way to tell you graph this well is to put in that y equals x line and see if it looks like it's flipped over. All right, hope that helps. Good luck. Study hard. See you later.